Many people come up to me today and ask, Johnny, why should I read the Bible? And for all of the different reasons that I could give for why someone should read the Bible, the most simple and the most fundamental reason for why you and I need to devote our life to God's Word is because it gives us the gift of knowing God. We read the Bible so that we can know God. I remember reading as a young boy the words of J.I. Packer in the book Knowing God. He says, what makes life worthwhile is having a big enough objective, something that catches our imagination and lays hold of our allegiance. For, for who else has this but a child of God? He says, for what higher, more exalted, more compelling goal can there be than knowing the God that you and I call Father? He says, that's the thing that makes life worthwhile, is having a big goal that thrills us. And that goal for a Christian is knowing God. And it is impossible to know God outside of the means of his revelation about himself in his word. Now, I want to talk briefly just about four different truths regarding knowing God. Number one, knowing God is the greatest privilege that you and I possess. In Jeremiah 9, verse 23, he says, Thus says the Lord, Let not a wise man boast of his wisdom, and let not the mighty man boast of his might. Let not a rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts boasts of this, that he understands and knows me. Did you catch that? You were made to boast. And God designed you to boast that you know him. So that's number one. Knowing God is the greatest privilege that you and I possess. And number two, knowing God is at the heart of the promises of God. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 34, there's a prophecy regarding what it's going to look like when the Messiah comes. In verse 33, I'll start there. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and on their heart I will write it, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Okay, what is, what is, what's it going to look like then when God writes on our heart who he is? Verse 34, they will not teach again each man his neighbor and each man his brother saying know the lord for they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them declares the lord for i will forgive their iniquity and their sin i will remember no more what excited god about redemption is that his children would deeply know him number three knowing god is at the heart of salvation. When we talk about eternal life, many people, if I asked you what is eternal life, you would say, well, it's living forever in heaven. But that's not at all the way that Jesus describes eternal life. In John 17, verse 3, Jesus is about to die and he's praying out loud to God the Father before he's crucified. And he says this, this is eternal life as he prays to the Father. You just imagine with me all of the disciples tuning in to how Jesus himself is about to define eternal life. And he says, this is eternal life, that they know you, God the Father and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Eternal life is knowing God. Eternal life is knowing God. So it's at the heart of our salvation, meaning that the gospel is not the end. The gospel is the means to the end of knowing God. Knowing God is not the icing on the cake. It's the cake. It's the whole thing. Lastly, knowing God is at the heart of the believer's sanctification. In Colossians 1, verse 10, it says, So that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Do you want to become more holy? Then it comes through an increased knowledge of God. And if you want to know God, you need to devote your life to the word of God. 
And that's why you read the Bible. Thank you.